In this lecture, we're going to dive into how some of those beliefs show up in our modern culture of work and also dive into the question of how work has become so central to modern life. I'm going to offer some perspectives here. They might be a bit bold, a bit uncomfortable for people, but I want to present them as an addition to what you already think and know about work and to widen the frame on how you're thinking about carving your journey and what your goals might be and how work fits into that. This quote was from a 2019 New York Times Magazine article in which they profiled this person that was making $1.2 million a year working on Wall Street. And he felt totally trapped and lacking a deeper meaning, except if you quickly do the math, I'm sure he could leave on paper. But there's something deeper at play here, something deeper about how people's identity is becoming wrapped up in work that keeps them from taking bold leaps. It's common to hear these phrases in today's world. In fact, it's totally acceptable to say things like, I can't meet up, I have to work late. I have no time to work out or meditate. I'm too busy with work. Why are these so common and so accepted? Andrew Taggart is a modern philosopher who has spent the past several years trying to untangle this mystery. And he believes there's no greater vexation in our time than the question of how to make a living in a manner that accords with leading a good life. Taggart believes that a root cause of the modern work crisis is that many people are putting making a living as the central goal or aim of their life. He says sustaining life makes it possible for us to continue living. However, only the good life can provide us with a sufficient reason for living. How did making a living become so central to life? As we saw in our exploration of the history of work, two dominant ethics emerge, the Catholic ethic, which says work is toil, and the Protestant ethic, which says work is good and we have a calling. And in today's context, we see the modern Protestant ethic, that work is still a calling, putting so much pressure on people to pursue this. Here's Oprah. I've become to believe that each of us has a personal calling that's as unique as a fingerprint. Her final line, and also allowing the energy of the universe to lead you. This is still deeply connected to a pseudo-religious idea of work. We also see this in modern times, or back in the 1800s in America, as the modern hustle ethic. De Tocqueville notes that a wealthy man thinks that he owes it to public opinion to devote his leisure to some kind of industrial or commercial pursuit. We see this today with Gary V. There's so much hustle in my day that I don't even have a second to spare to hang out. I believe making a living and work as the center of life became cemented in the 1940s to 1960s when something we now refer to now as the organization man or woman emerged, and it was mostly men at this time. But there evolved this certain idea of work that became connected to an enormous amount of benefits and an affordable and fulfilling life. However, many of these benefits have now been disaggregated or is not as guaranteed as in the past, but we're still left with the deep beliefs that work is the center of life from this generation. So work has gone from Plato's time when work was bad to a Catholic view of work with, in which work was necessary to a modern time in which to not work is now seen as the bad thing. Mary Hirschfield's an economist that wrote about 
our modern mistake, especially in the economic profession, of only looking at what makes economic sense. She goes back and looks at some of Thomas Aquinas' talks in the 1200s and how there was still a deeper connection to a higher aim of life beyond work. She says, a lot of times taking that new job with the higher salary that allows you to have the bigger house, the nicer car, and more stuff means less time for the stuff that matters, right? Your family, your community, your pursuit of friends playing the flute. Aristotle's mindset is typical of the ancient perspective on leisure, that it is a higher aim of life. Today, when we think of leisure, we think of idleness, to do nothing, laziness. In the Roman period, the Stoics, and here's Seneca, thought that leisure was active. In a letter to a friend, he says, I do not summon you to slothful or idle inaction, or to drown all your native energy in the slumbers and the pleasures that are dear to the crowd. That is not to rest. Today we live in a world in which busyness is seen as good and idleness is seen as bad. And this is largely because we've lost a cultural memory of what a certain sense of leisure is. Joseph Pieper writing about this trend in the 1940s says we mistake leisure for idleness and work for creativity. Leisure, he says, is the disposition of receptive understanding, of contemplative beholding, an immersion in the real. In leisure, there is something furthermore, something of the serenity of not being able to grasp. It's really about stepping into the unknown. In our modern obsession with busyness and always needing to be doing something, it's really hard to embrace a state in which you can really be at leisure. When we think of vacations, we think of recharging. How many people have you heard, I need a break from work, I need to recharge? Pieper in 1948 says the simple break from work, the kind that lasts an hour or the kind that lasts a week or longer, is part of the daily working life. The break is there for the sake of work. It is supposed to provide new strength for new work. We're still mostly tied to this mindset in the modern working world. I want to close with a quote from David White, who's a poet. And he says, despite everything our inheritance may tell us, Work is not and has never has been the very center of the human universe. And the universe with marvelous compassion seems willing to take endless pains to remind us of that fact. The takeaway here is that the world is beautiful. We need to disconnect from this idea that work is the center of our lives. Taggart offers three prompts in an interview I did with him. And I urge you to reflect on these questions. First, are you really a worker? When somebody says, who, you, who are you? Do you respond with, I'm an accountant? I'm a programmer? I'm a writer? And then if you're not a worker, then who are you? What else is worth living for? What practices do you have in part of your life? What relationships and conversations bring you alive? And third, given this, is the life you have designed enough? I know these are bold and tough questions, and I know you may, may be naturally rejecting some of the ideas I put forward in this. The reality is we still have to work and that we do need to make a living. But in order to make it sustainable, we need to figure out what it's really all for. 
And this course, I hope, is an exploration of that for you.